Yo, 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 yo. What up, peoples? Happy flipping Saturday, you legends. What up? Um, We got video gaming news for January 27th. And then more Power World. Oh, baby. Dude, I love this game. This game's so much fun. Absolutely loving it. What a pleasure, dude, to be able to uh, to enjoy this game right now in early access. Can't wait to see what else is coming for this game as we move forward, too. Hopefully, uh, a lot of good stuff coming for such a, uh, a large amount of potential there for this uh, piece of software, you know. Uh, hope you guys are doing well. Let's go ahead and do what we do, man. Let's dive in here. Uh, just so everybody knows, this will be a bit of a, a shorter stream day today. I'll, I'll probably only be going for about six hours today. Um, we've got, uh, a little bit of some, some stuff going on this afternoon. I'm going to be spending some time with my son this afternoon. So, um, I'll probably only be going until about noontime around lunchtime and then we'll, we'll call it quits and, and, uh, you know, then we'll be back for some more tomorrow. Okay. But it, we'll get a good, good chunk in just not as, not as long as we normally do. Um, so be prepared for that, but let's go ahead and dive into the news so we can, uh, find out what's going on in the world of video games. Cool. Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. We already have one article up. Apparently, Asus is already releasing a ROG Ally 2. This is from our buddy uh, Soup. Soup brought this to my attention yesterday, so we're going to cover this. Uh, that's really weird. That Rog Ally hasn't even been out for a year yet, I don't think. Uh, it's kind of kind of wild. We'll see what's going on there. I'll tell you everything you need to know about Marvel's Blade right now. It's being made by Arcane, which is the same company that brought us Redfall. I don't think I need to say more. I'll get the argument. Yeah, but they also made Dishonored and they made Deathloop and, you know, they made, uh, you know, so many other games that were pretty decent. If not, pretty good. You're right. But it's also not the most recent thing they made. The most recent thing they made was Redfall. So, you're always going to look at the most recent thing any, any company made to take a look at what they're potentially going to do next. That's just the reality of things. So, um, everything that I need to know about what Marvel's Blade is potentially going to be stems from what Redfall was. Because that's the studio. Yeah, Warner Brothers' big live service game push. We might take a quick look at this. We are, we've already talked about that a little bit. It's not a great look. We already see it coming with games like um, Rocksteady being under WB and doing uh, Suicide Squad, right? It's it's not a great look. It's not a great look. Uh, they they There's a difference between a, a solid platform, a solid strategy as a game, as a service, that's providing the same benefit to players content wise as developers are getting out of it, you know, as, as a, a product profit wise. But that's not what's being done here by WB. Uh, you take a look at what's being done. They're trying to monetize the crap out of these games. There's not going to be as much of a focus on these titles for content and uh, player focus as there is just monetization. You can already see it in Suicide Squad. Don't do this to me, baby. 
Don't do this to me. Thought I had this fixed, man. Of course. Talked about this yesterday. I'll have an article going up about this. About the Microsoft layoffs. I'm not going to dive back into it today. We talked about it enough yesterday. It, it, we, there are so many layoffs in the industry right now. It, it's terrible. But uh, we'll probably have to talk about new ones today. Therefore, there's not a lot of point in us, you know, rehashing uh, the stuff we've already talked about the previous day. The, the stuff that I've talked about already can be ha seen in yesterday's uh, video gaming news segment. If you go back and take a look at the VOD, uh, I'll have that stuff cut out, put on YouTube here, because I'll be talking about all this stuff. I'll, I'll have dedicated articles up, stuff like that. So it'll be on YouTube before long. Like a dragon, infinite wealth wealth makes the gaming makes gaming's hero. I can't read this morning. Like a dragon, infinite wealth makes gaming's he best hero even more lovable. They also Sega also paywalled New Game Plus. Nobody should be buying this game. Nobody should be supporting what Sega is doing here. This is absolutely disgusting. Nobody should be supporting this title until Sega backtracks and uh, removes that as a, a uh, paywalled item. That is disgusting. It should never, ever happen in this industry. We talked about that yesterday as well. Final Fantasy 14 uh, TV or movie adaptation, whatever it was going to be, is dead. It's not going to happen, at least not right now. It's been completely shuttered. It's done. Sony working on helpful new summary system for games. Let's see what that is. Talked about this as well yesterday. Some PS5 users lose access to new game days after release. See what's going on there. Game Pass adding new feature to help one of its biggest issues. See what this is. Looks like Hogwarts Legacy has some updates coming for this uh, summer. Let's see what's going on there. Yeah, the free game right now for uh, Epic is Infinifactory. And um, starting February 1st, it'll be Doors Paradox. So get your free games. No brainer, man. Talked about that yesterday. We've talked about the speculation that the new Nintendo hardware coming out is going to have an 8-inch screen. It's not official. It's not official by Nintendo or anything, so grain of salt there. We talked about this already as well. <clears throat> Ruiner Developer Recon Games has laid off 80% of their studio. Actually, I thought it was 80%. Are they saying half? I thought it was like 80%. Maybe I'm thinking of a different one. There's so it's so hard to keep up. There's so many studios just firing so many people.
looks like uh, some of the layoffs from Xbox's side of the uh, Microsoft layoffs were reportedly from the departments being dedicated to bringing games to physical retail. Steam hit with overwhelmingly positive reviews is 90% off if you hurry. What are they talking about here? Is this worth looking at? Oh, yeah. Shadow Tactics Blades of the Shogun. Yeah. Now, a lot of people might already have that on Epic if you heeded my advice and have been getting all your Epic free game. Pretty sure it's on Epic. We'll take a look, though. Even if not, that's a pretty good price for that game. Yeah, look, um, most games that get released, there's two to three different editions. I've been very outspoken about how uh, off-putting it is to see the the uh, enhanced or deluxe or, you know, whatever they want to call the editions, anything over the base game. Um it's almost always just n not worth the money. Almost always not worth the money. It's, um, you'll get a few cosmetics. You get to get in as what is essentially just being a final beta tester. Play the game three days early. It, you, you literally, it, it won't make much difference anyways. When ultimately, um, for most games, you're better off just waiting to see what the reviews are on most games anyways, unless you're really, really comfortable with the developer. Um, and, it, you know, it's like, what, Suicide Squad, right? It was, isn't that like a $70 game and a $100 deluxe edition? And then it's just riddled with monetization after the fact, too. I mean, that's another thing you got to take into consideration. It's, you know, and, and it's that exact situation few extra cosmetics, three days early access. It's really, really gross, dude. It's really gross. No gaming Bible. I will not click on your click baity titles. This is what I'd say to anybody that is looking forward to The Sims 5. Is that not the name of it, dude? I thought that was the name of it. Life by You. I think that's it. Steam servers are down? What? Hold on. 
That's it. Not life by me. Life by you. <laughs> this. This is a game um, being... And I, I don't know if this game is going to have the same amount of monetization in it or anything like that. I don't know. This game is coming out in March, March 5th, okay? But we all know how terribly disgusting The Sims has gotten, you know, under, you know, Maxis and EA. And it's just, if you go look at The Sims 4, which just recently, over the past, like, half year, I think, became free to play, finally. And it's just, if you want all of the content, you're going to be paying over $1,000 worth of DLC. Over $1,000 worth of DLC content, right? What up, brother? <coughs> What's up, man? Um, you know, it, it's... it's EA is such a god, just terribly scummy company. And if... I, I would say just... At least consider the notion of trying a game like life by you this is very very sim uh esque it's basically a sims clone i'll put the link in oh oh what oh it did interesting dude okay cool thanks buddy appreciate it yeah <clears throat> you gonna take a nap yeah i got you brother i'm sorry you've been so sick doc i feel i feel so bad that you feel bad man yeah, thanks, brother. Got you, man. Got you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dow. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. You take yourself a nap, buddy. Um, happy Saturday, by the way, man. I'll see you a little bit later. Um, so this is a game that's actually being developed by some former uh, Sims developers and stuff like that. You can see it looks very similar. Um, there's there's a lot of comparisons there right and um but just be prepared for the fact that this game is coming out again i have no idea what to expect with monetization in this game or how much it's going to cost anything like that but i guarantee you it can't be any worse than the sims is on that front and and how scummy and gross ea is with that whoa double up baby nice dude nice so just at least please consider taking a look if you're really into the sims take a look at a game like this rather than going and, and supporting uh ea any more than you know people already do it's just absolutely disgusting Um, is there anything you need me to do specifically, dude, in the game, if you're asleep? What is this? Okay, cool, man. Just want to make sure. Oh, it's a board game adaptation. That's what I was, that's what I figured. Oh, sick, dude. Nice, bro. Okay, cool. Yo, I bet the guns are pretty dope, huh? We got to get these factories rolling, huh? So we can start pumping out ammo and stuff. <laughs> yeah, stuff's starting to get really grindy, huh? Yeah. I love seeing articles like this. Cow World is utter trash. It makes me weep for the future of gaming. <laughs> Who wrote this? What? It's this is either this is one of two things is all this is. Look, everybody is is um obviously open to their own preferences and interpretation of of what they enjoy. Um, as far as entertainment goes and video games and stuff like that. But come on, man. Like, for you to not be able to pick out, you know, it, to, to, this is either clickbait because there are so many people 
that love the game that you're trying to come up with something to to contrast that notion and get people to to uh you basically aggro people into clicking on this right um yo davy what's up man how you doing buddy or you're literally just you know it, it's either that or you don't want to like what everybody else likes or you really don't like it but you can't actually look at the game and see any positives either and um you know that that kind of sucks Rage bait. Yeah, exactly, dude. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's what the way it comes off, right? Because look, I mean, the game has its issues, but it also, I mean, it, dude, utter trash? Uh, dude, come on. There's a reason why it's so popular. It's not trash. It is not trash, especially for an early access title. I mean, it, especially taking that into consideration. An early access title with this much content that uh a, a great mashup of genres and stuff come on man utter trash <sighs> craziness dude it's funny to see that kind of thing again i get not everybody's going to enjoy the game uh just because so many people are i understand that i get that But to call it utter trash is a is a, come on, man. I'll say it again. Every time I come across Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, nobody should be buying Sega games right now. If Sega is going to gatekeep New Game Plus behind paywall, Sega does not deserve anybody's money. Sega can get wrecked. How you, uh, how you, you, you getting back to 100% Davey? Looks like Ubi has their post launch roadmap for skull and bones. <laughs> I mean, we'll pull it up and take a look real quick. I don't know. And this, this will just be the news for the day, dude. It's, it's a bit bleak. Lots of what we're coming up with are things that we already talked about and saw yesterday. So, um, there's not a lot of point in us rehashing all that stuff out. Um, slowly. That's good, dude. Can you taste again? <laughs> Bro, uh, that, that's like hell for me. Not being able to taste food. Literal hell, dude. <laughs> Craziness. Uh. So let's dive into this stuff real quick. See what we got. Ubisoft details the post-launch roadmap for Skull and Bones. Look, I'll continue to uh, just prompt people to please, please, please don't buy into this game on release. Don't pre-order. Don't buy into this on release. Give it a few days to see what people are saying. This game has had way, 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 way too many issues in the development process. For anybody to be comfortable with buying this game uh, on release. Everybody interested in this title should be waiting to see what reviews say before you're, you, you decide to spend money on this title. There's just absolutely no flipping way. This game had like somewhere around eight to nine delays over the entire period of its development. That is in and of itself... Very, very concerning. There was significant issues in the development of this game. And while, again, delays are something that developers need to be comfortable doing, to an extent, we need to be also comfortable with letting developers delay if need be. But when you start seeing three plus delays, especially, you know what I mean? I think, you know, one to two delays for a, a title when they're going, look, man, we just, we've had some hitches in the project development. We need to make sure this game's going to be polished. We're going to be a bit understanding about that, right? We would rather have a game come out and feel polished than we would the game be released and be unfinished, right? Absolutely. But on the flip side of that coin, you start having 
three plus delays, you start going, look, man, there's something wrong with this project. There's something wrong in the development of this game. And that should start leading to people being a much more hesitant on the front of buying into a product on release. You should be waiting to see what the, the title reviews like, unless you can play it at, on a subscription service you already have or something like that. You should be waiting to see what the review process, you know, what the reviews are coming out as, what the baseline reviews are saying about the experience of this game and, and how well it plays and things like that before you decide to invest in this type of product, right? So with that notion out there, uh, Ubisoft has detailed the post-launch roadmap for Skull and Bones as well. Season 1, Raging Tide, Season 2, Chorus of Havoc, Season 3, Into the Dragon's Wake, and Season 4, Shadows of the Deep. Skull and Bones will finally be released next month after one of the longest and most outlandish development processes in the story of video games. The game was completely remade from scratch after years of development, and the release has been delayed so many times, the fans have even thought that it would never happen. After gaining momentum about a year ago and several testing phases, Skull and Bones is headed to its official release with an upcoming uh, open beta that will run from February 8th to the 11th. Extra content to boot. Developer Ubi is immersed in the final steps of the promotion of Skull and Bones ahead of the release of the game. One of the biggest concerns about the type of experience that Skull and Bones will offer is the in-game content. The latest video published by the studio delves into this matter and also reveals the kind of content that will be added to the game during its first year. Skull and Bones will receive a plethora of additional content spread across four seasons. All of them include new activities, additional features, epic battles, and seasonal rewards for players to unlock. First season, Raging Tides will pitch you against the legendary pirate Philip uh, Lopez in a challenge battle on the sea. Overall, all the extra content coming to Skull and Bones is designed to expand the game with more things to do when you reach higher levels, and it offers you more possibilities to expand your empire while giving you a reason to return to the game. Soup, what up, buddy? <clears throat> What's going on, man? Good morning, buddy. Happy Saturday. Um, so... We'll watch this real quick. Um, if you want to become a, a legendary pilot, the release of Skull and Bones is scheduled for February, February 16th on PC. Uh, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S. Highly recommend you try the open beta starting in two weeks. Your progress will be limited. Um, but it will carry over if you purchase the game later. Of course, you can use our com uh, comparator to check out the cheapest Skull and Bones digital download codes. Um, let's watch this real quick. That's very loud, I apologize. There you go. In the first year of Skull and Bones, risk everything you have to your name and face off against merciless pirate lords as you seek to establish your empire on the high seas. <laughs> yep. From the disease, and the flamboyant injured. Hubang yeah. twins to the Hubang enigmatic slip, Li Tianning, each brings guy. with them looming Yank storms the your left arm, to stir yeah. these waters to chaos. In the weeks leading up to a final standoff Have you at the end of the season, out, man? you'll need to overcome their ensuing fleets, each with increasing difficulty. One and did you report sure it? You take them down did you report the injury on the job, dude? And take advantage of the new ships and gear available each season. Ready your arsenal to defend against impending anarchy by looting stronger equipment through new world events introduced each season. So I was just telling everybody, soup, that everybody should be seas, hesitant about this game. Not buying on release, not pre-ordering. From merchant not pre convoys traveling along the trade routes to elite warships. The premise around it is settlements. very good, but you just can't trust this. We're game. really excited for players to discover the end game of Skull and Bones. The challenges you face will be more dangerous, with a lot more at stake. You'll go from working with the kingpins like Skurlock and Rama to becoming their rivals. The Helm, an unchallenged colossus of smuggling, beckons aspiring pirates from around the globe with the promise of wealth, influence, and the coveted title of kingpin. Here, you'll discover that you can craft your own contraband like rum and opium. 
You'll start with seizing many factories around the den of St. Anne, but more many factories can be found across other regions of the Indian Ocean. Those can be lumber yards, settlements, foundries, and others you'll discover along your journey. <laughs> Controlling them will help you yeah, generate profit I, automatically I'm, I'm kind of the without same needing way, to do the dirty I learned a long yourself. time ago that you also be able to make kinds of situations the best thing you can do pilot. is because if you Some are doing manual are labor and stuff there's always the chance that you're going to hurt yourself even your if profits. it doesn't hurt at the time with a growing you know, empire you can it, it elevate your that you operations get even further and injuries can be for depending on the severity of it be and what kind of injury it is it can be a long term kind of thing the rate of <laughs> and if you didn't report it the company's not really liable for it right so it's one of those things where you got to be careful with that company I mean, you're, you're putting your body on the line for that company, Drop a right? Convoy, then, you know, if you do hurt yourself, you then and make it to it's a their job to take care of you as well. So, you know, I just in want you to be careful. You will fight make sure that you're being taken care of, buddy. Warfare, that's it. To be the last pirate standing and seize control of a manufactory. At post-launch, we will introduce new end game features each season, from the ability to assign fleets of ships to your trade routes to bribing corrupt officials for an edge over your rivals. Engaging in precarious PvP activities will put you on the hit list of surrounding pirates. Helm Wagers are a high-risk, high-reward PvP activity where you can choose to gamble all your coin and risk losing them all to ensuing players. Cutthroat Cargo is triggered upon picking up a legendary treasure map. Accepting a wager or picking up a map will notify surrounding pirates and you will quite literally have a target on your head, at least until you make it to the target outpost to complete those activities. Reputation is everything. Claw your way to the top of the leaderboard to solidify your standing amongst kingpins. Being put up on the kingpin ranks will earn you rewards, and your placement will determine the type of reward you'll get. The leaderboard will reset each season with new rewards that you can compete for. From an exhilarating dragon boat race to mid-autumn festivals, partake in free time-limited events each season to claim the rewards that follow. Work together with fellow pirates and race against time to complete exclusive community events and obtain treasure troves of loot. We'll continue to add quality of life features to enhance your player experience. We're looking forward to working alongside you, our community of pirates, I know. as we continue to build on the perilous world of Skull and Bones. Ready your cannons, plunge into naval mayhem, and defend your empire on the seas of Skull and Bones. I mean, the premise behind it is... <clears throat> the premise behind it is in interesting, right? It's intriguing. But it, there's a difference between... I mean, how many, how many times have we had games come about that had an intriguing premise and... Um, a really interesting kind of thought behind what the game could be, but the way the developer handled the execution of the game was just not there, right? And um, unfortunately, Anthem, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you know, just th there's so many examples of, of it just not being handled appropriately. And that's that's something that I think is um, going to be concerning about this. Again, it's taken way, way too long. The tumultuous, uh, lengthy issues that have plagued uh, the development of, of this game are in and of itself just very, very concerning. And people should be very careful about buying into this game um, on release. Just wait and see what they say, man. There's no reason to... to uh, you know, rush into this game at all. See what else we got here. Um, look, man, we've talked about this a little bit, so I'm just going to skim this. Basically, what this comes down to is us talking about WB uh, really uh, heavily pivoting into wanting to do games as a service, right? Uh, it wasn't eight years of delay. It was more like six years, uh, six years of development, six to seven years of development, but it was like uh, around... I think that's how long it was. 
Was it eight years of de- develop? De- of de- it, I, it was like eight delays, is what it was. It was. I don't think it was eight years of development necessarily, but it was. Um, I don't know how long the development was. It was like eight eight delays for sure. That's what I was talking about. Um, I don't know how long it was actually in development. When did it start development? It could have been like eight years of development too. Let's see. Way over that. 11 years. 11 years of development. The eight, the number eight is the about the number of delays they've had, right? Some I read somewhere else they were saying like six years of of development. That might have been the six years of delays they've had though. The time period of delays was like six years, I think, and the the number of delays is like eight. I think that's what it was. But this game has been in development since um, the end of 2013, so roughly ten years. A decade. Crazy. So, uh, let's discuss this. Let's discuss this. Inside Warner Brothers Games' big live service push and doubling down on DC, Game of Thrones, and more franchises. So, as I said when I found this article, and we've talked about this a little bit already before, um... The way that I will approach this topic is more about I am not against games as a service as a whole. You know, um, games as a service is kind of a broad um, area for video games. Um, I think about anything that's live service can be considered game as a service, you know. and there's very good ways to do it, which are mutually beneficial. Like basically, uh, there are good ways to do it where companies are developing a very, very high quality product with continual content that is um, very nice for the game player. Um, whether it be something that's on a more free to play game as a service. Uh, you know, format or even a uh, an upfront cost, uh, whatever. They all are, you know, in some form or fashion, incorporating monetization tactics, right? Battle passes, cosmetics. The thing that I'm not about is pay to win. Anything like anything pay to win is disgusting. Doesn't need to be there. Um, but there are good ways to go about making these games in bad ways, and um. Obviously, we're as us as consumers and, and video gaming enthusiasts, we we are going to be more accepting of a free to pay title, ramping up some of the monetization stuff to generate revenue to continue to bring in money uh, for high quality games that people are enjoying to continue to you know be able to support that product and uh, bringing new content to the table and things of that nature, right? When a product has to is going to cost up front and then is also riddled with monetization, that feels a bit different. Um, like what we're getting from WB in just a couple of weeks now, not even a couple of weeks, uh, about a week of Suicide Squad, right? This game is a full AAA price tag. WB is the publisher. Rocksteady is the developer. Full AAA price tag for the base game, $70. $100 if you want to go up and be a final beta tester um, and play the game three days early. And um, then it's just riddled with monetization in and of, the, you know, throughout the game afterwards as well. So this is the big question for me about Warner Brothers. When they're going big live service push, you know, it's like, okay. Well, what I've seen from Warner Brothers in the past and what we're about to see from them again is that their live service stuff is not the most consumer friendly. Yeah. They, they tend to lean towards the side of trying to just wring money out of people instead of focusing on quality. 
I'm not saying they haven't put out some some amazing games like, you know, and I'm not talking about just specifically uh, uh, live service games and stuff, but you know they've made some good ones. They have, you know, they've published some good games, the Shadow of Mordor games. You know, I mean, we could go on and on. They've got some good ones, but you know, WB being WB, they've got a lot of IPs under their brand. And they are definitely one of those companies that know that they have people sold on these brands as well. And no matter what they do, the people that are fans of these brands, whether it be Marvel or, you know, Game of Thrones or, or not Marvel, but the DC stuff, the Game of Thrones, the... Um, you know what whatever they have under their their you know they've got all kinds of stuff they got jesus it's just insane what wb has you know people will buy it people will buy it and people will will continue to feed force feed them money uh because they can just lean on the fact that there are people that are invested in just uh, loving these characters and loving these universes and that's the thing that's worrisome for me about the this kind of company right We've seen them do this time and time again where they they just they don't have a, a, a huge focus on not only making I guess a, a dual play at, at bringing a quality product to the table for us as consumers while also generating good revenue for themselves. A lot of it just comes down to them playing on this fact of having these licenses these big brands and um leaning on the fact that people are going to buy into it because of that and then they're going to they're going to monetize monetize the crap out of they're going to lean heavily on the big service the live service stuff the games as a service and and uh people will buy it right so i just want people to be careful of this that's my thing um you know warner brothers is, is one of those companies that has been like this for quite some time and is uh, a bit scary to me when it comes with uh, the games that they develop uh, with their subsidiaries and publish themselves, you know. David Zaslav's uh, most critical mission in leading Warner Brothers Discovery through the streaming wars is leading them through the streaming wars, but he also sees a rich opportunity for the company to capture a bigger chunk of territory in games. The WB Discovery chief who can't go... One earnings call without boasting about the power of the company's rich trove of IP used his quarter three address as a chance to announce plans to level up the video game division, which he says has consistently enjoyed among the highest return on investments of any of our businesses. This is where Zaslav's love of franchises meets its plans for domination of the nearly $200 billion gaming industry. While smaller than some of the leading pure play gaming companies, namely EA, Nintendo, Ubi, and Take Two Interactive, as well as publishing competitors Sony and Microsoft, Warner Brothers has managed comparable operating margins and is punching above their weight thanks to four IPs the company values at $1 billion a piece in the gaming world Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, DC, and Mortal Kombat. A very consistent message coming from the executive lawyer of Warner Brothers Discovery is the importance of franchises. David Haddad, president of Warner Brothers Interactive, tells Variety, there's a unique and important role games have in keeping our franchises relevant, resonant, and exciting because there's plenty of fans and plenty of people consuming content where games are their starting point. Two franchises that WB Discovery profited from the most in 2023 are Mortal Kombat with the release of MK1, which has sold 3 million copies since its September release, and Harry Potter with last February's launch of Hogwarts Legacy, which now crossed 24 million copies sold and was the best-selling game of last year worldwide. Top console slash PC titles uh, last year full game sales. Here you go. Hogwarts Legacy, number one, Warner Brothers. Number two, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, Activision. Bro, I don't know how. I don't know how. D people hate this game. The reviews for this game are, are atrocious. Why are people buying Call of Duty games? It is so maddening to see this. As, I guess, appropriate enough maddening to see people still buying into something like Madden as well when these games are absolute balls also. 
EA doesn't do anything to approve the gameplay of these games at all. People still buy the crap out of these sports games from EA also, though. EA basically just, like, erases the flipping number on the box and puts the new year on there. Changes out a few uh, names for for the uh, players that have retired and the new ones coming in, man. And uh, there it is, you know. Number four, Marvel Spider-Man 2. Uh, appropriate. Tears of the Kingdom. Here's the thing that's impressive. You want to see something? Hogwarts Legacy uh, was on virtually every platform. It even hit Switch by the end of the year. Modern Warfare 3, all platforms virtually. Um, Madden, most platforms. Spider-Man 2, proprietary Sony. Tears of the Kingdom, proprietary Nintendo. These hit four and five, and they have a huge disadvantage it sells over those top three. You know, huge disadvantage because they are uh, only on one platform. They're proprietary titles, so it's that's something to take into consideration here when you look at these kinds of lists, right? Diablo uh, four from Blizzard, Call of Duty Modern Warfare two from Activision, Mortal Kombat one from Warner Brothers, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Oh my God, this was the ninth highest selling game of last year and it was trash unfinished piece of garbage this was an unfinished piece of garbage on every platform i think it's finally better but this is the this was the ninth highest selling game of last year There is something wrong in this industry. And a big part of it is the fact that people buy into this. You know, it's terrible. And then EA Sports FC 24. Look at the, look at all the EA in here. EA. Up there three times. Warner Brothers up there twice. Activision Blizzard up there three times. And we're talking trash 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 the pro here's the problem i mean you know the the thing that sucks is that it doesn't matter how bad EA Sports FC is, you know, and has been forever. It doesn't matter how bad Madden is and has been forever. You know, games like this, there's no alternative. There's no alternative. Nobody else can make a, uh, you know, a sim uh, in that market like, you know, EA can. Um, they can make arcade style games and stuff, but they can't make real life sims simulation games and stuff ea has a lock on the licensing for that stuff so nobody else can play anything else that's the thing that sucks anybody that wants to play a real life simulation of those kinds of games they have to buy ea it's terrible dude uh those impressive cell figures caught the eye of zaslov and cfo gunner weidenfels who are focused on reducing warner brothers discovery's massive excuse me post-merger debt Enough to signal to the industry the, the gaming division is the company's new darling in its uh, path to profitability. Double and triple check some of the metrics here because it's such a great investment opportunity. Weidenfeld said during the third quarter call, adding he's stunned that we haven't been investing more into this opportunity. We're going to start tackling that. Top publicly traded companies by gaming revenue. Tencent. Jesus Christ. Blowing everybody else out of the water. So the uh, the till color will be 2022, and then black's 2023. Then Sony, Apple, Microsoft, NetEase, Google, Activision, Blizzard, EA, Nintendo, Take Two. Warner Brothers CEO 
uh, of global streaming and gaming, JB Parrot, tells Variety the key to topping those numbers is figuring out ways to make prized IP more than just one great hit every three or four years. We want it to be always on, and the good news is the gaming space is lending itself to that. Perret, is it Perrette? Perrette, maybe, says. The exec is referring to the success uh, big franchises have seen recently in offing, offering not just splashy console and PC video games, but also live service, mobile, and free-to-play titles all within the same IP universe. Perrette or Perrette, I don't know. I don't know how to say it. We'll say with Perrette. Uh, says that uh, the combination is what he's looking to build out for each Warner Brothers. Each of Warner Brothers' most valued franchises, but Warren's gaming titles are on a long cycle. This plan can't be delivered on in 2024, obviously. Expect more mobile games, he's saying. Expanding the DC-focused gaming offering. Uh, they will be looking to new DC studio chiefs, James Gunn, yep, and Peter Safran, who have announced plans to incorporate video games into their revamped canon moving forward. Yeah. Yeah, coming up, uh, Warner Brothers will be launching Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, and they'll be putting their free-to-play brawler game Multiverses back into release after it it initially released, what was it, EVO 2022? EVO 2022, um, it released, and uh, it took the place of Smash. Smash got pulled out of the EVO tournament because Nintendo's disgusting. And they didn't want to allow people to play Smash at uh, a tournament that was then, for the first time, owned by Sony. <laughs> so, really what they did was they slapped all of their uh, consumers and, and fan base in the face and said, well, we're not going to let you play our game. It wasn't, it wasn't something that Sony took hard. It was something all the fans took hard. Nintendo sucks like that. But anyways, Multiverses came out and had a smash, very smash focused gameplay style and it took the place and people loved it. And uh, as soon as Evo hit and Multiverses released right before it, it was uh, a hit, dude. People loved it. They were playing it. And, um, you know, a lot of people were playing it right after Evo. And then all of a sudden it just died. It just died. Nobody was playing it anymore, man. And uh, then what was it? Beginning of last year sometime. Spring of last year, I think, they just shut it down. They were like, look, uh, we've got to figure out a way to uh, try to bring this game back into prominence somehow and get people back into playing this game, so we're going to take it offline. Uh, you can't buy it anymore. Uh, if you already own it, you can play a single player, but the, off the online component's going to be gone. We're going to take it down, and um, we'll re-release it in the near future after we've worked on it a little bit more. And so um, apparently that's what's being done. So... People that think that Multiverses is a new game, it's not. It was released in 2022. It's already been out there, you know, in the wild. You know, pe people have had access to this game for, you know, quite a while now. <clears throat> this is a very, very long article. I skimmed a good chunk of this because we knew of what a lot of this was going to be about, but... If you want to read all of it, by all means, take a look. But we got the gist of what we needed to see there. Sony is working on a helpful... Let me... Hold on. Let's get this going. All right. Uh, Sony is working on a helpful new summary system for games. A new patent from Sony hints at a summary system that could make keeping track of a game's story and gameplay events easier for some players. Uh, bullet point. Sony is developing a new summary system to help gamers keep track of story events and gameplay in narrative-based PlayStation games. The system will provide a pop-up window with key story beats and gameplay events, making it easier for forgetful or easy distracted, easily distracted players to follow along. Um... 
This patent shows Sony's commitment to making gaming more accessible, particularly for players with ADHD or poor memories who struggle to keep track of complex narratives. Not only that, but I'll tell you for a fact that it's not just an accessibility thing. This is something that is going to benefit people like myself. Dude, I remember back uh, before I started streaming, I, you know, I've always been a lover of, of deep RPG, you know, games that have a lot to them lore wise and quest line wise and stuff like that. And I found it very hard to play those kinds of games because I would maybe find a day occasionally where I would have a significant amount of time, you know, or, you know, a substantial amount of time to, to dive in and start playing a game like that, you know. And uh, then I wouldn't find another day to really play, to dive it back into that kind of playthrough again for quite some time. And uh, when that happens, you tend to lose track of where you were and what you were doing and, and, you know, where you were headed and things of that nature. You just, if you don't, if you're not, you know, at least in some kind of consistent basis playing the game, you, you end up losing out on, on what was going on and what you were doing and, and you know, um, so this is something that could benefit those types of players as well that aren't able to be in the titles as often as they would like to be. Um, I think that the, the bullet points are good enough here. This is going to be just a, uh, a summary of, or the bullet points are a summary of what they're going to talk about here anyways. And we all know how this works. <laughs> this is a, a patent that's been filed. This is not technology that's already being incorporated. This is a patent. This is something that they're working on in house. They have filed a patent to say, this is something that we want to develop for ourselves. Uh, we don't want anybody copying this. And um, we all know how patent, patents work. They get filed every single day for large corporations like this. And many, 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 many of them do not end up coming to fruition. So it could, but it quite possibly also will not become something in the future. We'll just have to pay attention and wait and see. Some PlayStation users are losing access to a new game days after its release. Some PlayStation users have lost access to a new game days after its release. Fortunately, those in the situation are being 100% refunded following the error between releases like Tekken 8, The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, and of course, Pal World. There are lots of games to play right now. Not every new release, chiefly Pal World, is out on PS5, but most are. If you are on PS5, though, you can cross one game off the list, depending on where in the world you reside. More specifically, you can cross Bulletstorm VR on PlayStation VR 2 and PS5 off your list. The new VR game was released worldwide on January 18th, and unfortunately for it, the game is not being received well due to various issues with it. That's not why it's being refunded and delisted in certain regions, though. It's being refunded and delisted because it was never supposed to be released in these parts of the world to begin with. What parts of the world exactly? Japan and South Korea, two fairly major markets for PlayStation. According to a Reddit post from uh, in Kuvo, People Can Fly, the game was not supposed to be available in Japan and South Korea because the game could not obtain a rating in these regions, which are historically tough on violent content. Despite this, pre-orders and even some orders briefly after launch went through for the game. All of these orders have been refunded though, and the game has been delisted in these two countries so that the problem will not continue. You're not in Japan or South Korea. None of this pertains to you. If you are, you're out of luck, at least for now. It's possible the game could obtain a rating in the future after some of the content is edited, but not only is this not a guarantee, there's no mention of that being the plan. Uh, anything's possible in the future though. All right, right now though, you're out of luck. Xbox Game Pass adding new feature to help one of its biggest issues. Microsoft is working on a new feature that will help alleviate one of the biggest issues, Game Pass, as you would expect. Xbox is great at spotlighting the new games added to Xbox Game Pass, as well as the biggest games. If there's anything new and notable, it's going to make sure you know about it. On the flip side, it is not so great at relaying information about games leaving. It is trying to be better at it, though. To this end, Microsoft has revealed that a new Xbox Game Pass feature is currently in testing with the Xbox Insiders program. This feature is a new dialogue that will help clarify exactly when a game is leaving. In addition to this, it will offer an easy path to purchase the game. So you can not only continue to play it after it leaves, but so that you can make uh, advantage 
make advantage, I think take advantage of the 20% Xbox Game Pass discount subscribers get when buying games available via the subscription service. Quote, when launching an Xbox Game Pass title that is leaving the catalog soon, a random subset of users will see we have re-enabled a new dialogue which will help clarify exactly when it's leaving and, and offer and offer an easy path to purchase the game to keep playing even after it has left. How this feature will look when it releases, we don't know. This information is not provided. It should be rolled out to the public sometime this year, but it could be a few months, if not longer, before this happens based on previous similar situations. In the meantime, if any more information about the services, whether through the official channels or leaks, uh, comicbook.com will keep us updated. All right. Well, that's good. Right on. Looks like we got some updates coming this summer for Hogwarts Legacy. According to a new tweet, on the game's official for, uh, feed, Hogwarts Legacy will release all new updates and features this summer. Further content that was previously exclusive to PlayStation will be released on other platforms later this summer. Currently, PlayStation fans have had access to an exclusive Haunted Hogsmeade quest, Hogsmeade shop, and shopkeeper keeper cosmetic. Pre-order bonuses also included a Felix Felicis uh, potion recipe. Um... There are no concrete release dates for any of the upcoming changes, but today's announcement asks fans to stay tuned in the coming months for further details. As we near the one-year anniversary of Hogwarts Legacy, we wanted to let our community know the Hogwarts Legacy PlayStation exclusive content will be available on other platforms later this summer, along with additional updates and features for the game. Stay tuned. Today's announcement does not confirm if all the PlayStation exclusives will release on the other consoles, though. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see as we move forward this year and see what uh, see what all is going to come from uh, what they're what they're going to give to the other platforms. Um. <clears throat> So again, on release, the game wasn't exclusive to PlayStation, but they had a contract for exclusive content if you played it on PlayStation that the other platforms wouldn't get. And that's the content that's going to be rolled out to the other platforms now. Um, Steam hit with overwhelmingly positive reviews is 90% off if you hurry. Between now and February 1st, all Steam users can buy a highly rated Steam game for just $3.99 US. Um, the mystery game in question, released back in December of 2016, uh, developed by Mimi, Mimi Games, which unfortunately has since shuttered, and published by Dedalic Entertainment. According to Steam users, it's quite good as evident by the fact that it has an overwhelmingly positive user review rating. 96% um, up positive to be exact of over 28,000 reviews shadow tactics blades of the shogun okay um most people know what this game is so i'm probably not going to watch the trailer here but i will bring this up they're having a, a steam pirates versus ninjas fest sell right now so this is uh one of the games that's going to be in this cell right if you pull this up guessing there's another me, me, me game right there it's supposed to be very good um well we'll just pull it up so there you go the um blades of the shogun is four dollars the anniversary bundle with uh a lot of the dlc stuff or all the, the entire packages twelve dollars which is like soundtrack um aiko's choice art book and strategy guide soundtrack um so if you're interested now let me bring this notion up real quick if people listen to my advice you might already have this game because i'm pretty sure they gave this away already um let me look here I thought they gave this away. Maybe not. Where was I thinking this game was given away at? I, 
I thought there this game was given away for sure on a platform. Dude, I'm positive it was. Was it GOG? Maybe it was GOG. Make sure I don't have it on Steam as well. Go back. Dude, I know that game was free not too long ago somewhere. Did I just forget to grab it? That's a possibility. I don't normally do that though. See if I can find it. Where was that? It does look like it was GOG, dude. Maybe I just missed it. I might have just missed it. What up, Kayla? How you doing, friendo? Yeah, it does look like it was on GOG. I must, I must have missed, uh, missed out on grabbing. Wait, wait, wait. No, it was on Epic as well. It was like a year ago. It was on Epic. I must have missed this. Really? No way, dude. I thought I grabbed this. I knew it was on a couple platforms for free. That's weird. Oh, probably because I have this filter in. Take that off. That's probably why. That's it, dude. I had the installed one on. Yeah, so um, it was on Epic about a year ago. Confirmed. I have it, dude. I'm an idiot. Those googly eyes, you love those googly eyes, don't you? Um, I'm great, friendo. Yeah, thanks for asking. How you been? What's up? So Shadow Tactics, Blades of the Shogun um, was free on Epic. I was right. Apparently it was free on GOG at one point as well. Um, it might have also been on Amazon. I've seen this game free on multiple platforms. So just know that if you are somebody that heeds my advice or keeps your eyes open, for free titles or across PC platforms and stuff, then you quite possibly have this game already in one of your libraries. So before you decide to go spend $4 on it on Steam, you might take a look in your libraries and see if you already have it. Like uh, I have it right here. Um, I know that I probably uh, have it on another platform as well. I just need to take a look around. I forgot that I had a uh, filter in that wasn't showing it before. <coughs> Excuse me. So just know, that uh, you could possibly already have it. But if you don't, this is a very, very well-reviewed game. And um, at $4, quite possibly worth the uh, worth the price there. Yeah. So I put the link for the game on Steam um, in, the, uh, in the chat there too. So take a look if you're interested. All right. Last article I have for the day, guys. So um, we're going to finish this up. This will be our last article. And then we will go start playing games together, okay? We will be getting back into Pal World, and um, we'll have a good day. It'll only be about a six-hour stream. I'm only going to go until about noontime. I've got some stuff going on this afternoon with my son, so um, it'll be a bit of a uh, shorter day, only about a six-hour stream. 
And uh, but we'll have fun. We'll get as much done as we can in Power World. We're building our new base. We got a lot done yesterday. Uh, it'll be fun, man. So uh, we'll have a great day. But if you have anything else to add for the new segment, let me know in chat, and we'll address it before we move on and, and uh, sum this up and start playing games. Okay. So let's get in here and take a look at this. What's going on here? You, hey, what's going on here, man? There we go. Uh, Asus ROG Ally 2 gaming handheld coming later this year, says Asus India VP. This is weird. And shout out to Soup. Thanks, buddy. Uh, Soup is the one that hooked us up with this info and this article yesterday. <clears throat> and I was like, this is kind of odd. I'll talk about this tomorrow. <clears throat> the issue is that the ROG Ally has only been out for roughly a year, maybe. So why are they already... Popping out a Asus ROG Ally 2. That's kind of weird. Let's see if they talk about this. Asus plans to have a ROG Ally gaming handheld successor ready later this year, according to TechLusive. On Wednesday, the India-based tech site extracted this ROG Ally 2 news nugget from Asus India VP Arnold Su. Su was interviewed after the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED launch event in India earlier in the day. We most likely will launch a second-generation handheld gaming console this year. What? Said Su to Tech TechLusive. However, it was good to hear a little more detail about the direction for the second-generation handheld. Interview was also revealed that the ROG Ally 2 will stick with the Windows ecosystem but will somehow be more gaming-focused. For those of us outside of India, some less interesting interview segments included discussions about the relative penetration rate of the handheld in India versus other countries. Um, many readers will be scouring this report and the source for any clues on the improvements Asus intends to deliver the next generation of the ROG Ally. Sadly, preliminary specs seemed outside the bounds of the conversation between the source and the Asus India VP. However, we might as well enjoy a little speculation regarding potential improvements coming to the ROG Ally 2. If the designers of the original device took heed of our review from May last year, they would surely target the software, ergonomic, and battery life, which were lowlights of the product experience. Obvious target for upgrade is a processor. Asus received a timed exclusive on the AMD Risen Z1 Extreme SoC based on Zen 4 and RDNA 3 architectures. Uh, perhaps Asus will be lucky enough to scoop a, a Risen Z2 Extreme successor, which could be a handheld gaming tuned version of the uh, Risen 8040 or newer, newer series of APUs. We don't think it's likely that Asus will jump ship to Intel following its footsteps of MSI's claw. Besides the negative points we highlighted in our original ROG Ally review, Asus could choose a different screen size and or upgrade from an IPS to an OLED panel. They probably will. It's a less... OLED panels are not as expensive as they used to be, and they take less uh, energy to run than an IPS panel does, which means you're saving more battery on a mobile device. The system 16 gigs of LPDDR5 Probably that's RAM, right? Probably wouldn't need upgrading for now, but an introductory one terabyte base storage amount would be very welcome, absolutely, given the size of modern Windows games. Lastly, this handheld market has rapidly become highly competitive, so keeping a cap on the price will be important. Yeah, because the Asus ROG Ally came out initially and was very, very, very expensive. It was like a $900 and a $1,000 USD price point, which was significantly higher than most other handhelds. Um, so... This is weird. This is interesting. It doesn't sound like they're saying this is just going to be a uh, uh, upgraded version of the Asus ROG, a uh, current Asus ROG Ally. They're saying this is a complete new model. You know, Steam Deck currently, you know, they they for the past two years have had their original version of the Steam Deck, and then they kind of upgraded it. It's still the original Steam Deck, but they put a bigger battery in it. They put an OLED screen in it. Um, they got some bigger storage in them, you know, so they upgraded them a bit. And, and But they're going to roll with that for like the next two to three years probably too. Um, whereas they've said, you know, don't expect the Steam Deck 2, quote unquote, Steam Deck 2 if that's what it'll be called, the next iteration to uh, of our Steam Deck to actually come out for the next two to three years because we're looking for a generational leap in hardware they upgraded which is good that's not what this sounds like this sounds like they're actually releasing and developing an entirely new 
handheld hardware as a whole. And it's it's only been like a year since the Asus ROG Ally was even released. That's that's really odd, man. It's odd. Kind of crazy. Uh I'm sorry, Kayla. I hate to hear that. So wait. You accrue paid time off. You accrue paid time off and then you request paid time off that you have accrued from working and they deny it. Is that the case? Sounds like you just need to start calling in sick for a little bit. <laughs> you know, Jesus. That's terrible to hear. I'm so sorry. Um, I hope everybody's having a great uh, weekend so far, man. Uh, we had a great day yesterday to start it off. I hope everybody's Saturday is going very well. We're going to have a banger of a day. It's not going to be quite as long again as uh, our normal days go. Normally, we go eight, nine hours average, you know, somewhere between there. And today's going to be closer to six. We, I got some stuff. I'm going to be uh, doing some stuff with my son today. So I'll only be going until about noontime, about, about lunchtime. But we're going to have a fun day, man. Um, appreciate the new segment. Uh, appreciate everybody that's a part of what we do, man. You guys rock. Thanks for always being a part of uh, this community and all the content we do whether it be the new segment the gameplay stuff we do all that uh, you know helping to just create this amazing place for all of us to be a part of is incredible if anybody's not familiar with what we do here um we do streams six days a week um we always start off at roughly 6 a.m cst cdt we begin with video gaming news like we're finishing right now and uh then we go play games for the rest of the day so we always are just trying to stay current on what's going on in the industry promote a healthier industry for us as video gaming consumers and um, enthusiasts. And, um, you know, we love to have discussions about uh, what that means, right? So a lot of these hot topics that, that are we bring up every day uh, when we do our searches for articles that are uh, discussing, you know, or, or informing us about what's going on in the industry, uh, discussing these types of things and staying current and, and up to date with what's happening in the industry is important. And and uh, we always begin the streams like that <clears throat> before we play games for the rest of the day, like we're about to do with going and playing Power World right now. So um, I don't know if, if uh, digging the content, whether it be uh, live right now, seeing it for the first time or, or as a uh, VOD, either one, then um, just know that all of our most of the content we've done previously, whether it be playthroughs of games, funny clips and highlights, video gaming news segments, all that stuff. I do my best to make sure that content's on the Twitch channel as highlights, as well as on the YouTube channel as VODs and in playlists. And uh, if you're enjoying that content or this, come hang out with us when we're live, man. We've got an amazing community of awesome people here, uh, all about just enjoying video games is what brings us together, but trying to uh, actually create a, uh, you know, long lasting community that is about taking care of one another and, and, uh, just being inviting and, and welcoming and, and inclusive and, and, uh, just a solid place for people to hang out and, and engage with one another and, and, uh, take care of one another, lean on one another and, and be there for each other whenever we need it and stuff and be void of negativity and toxicity and things like that. So, uh, if you can dig that, it sounds like your kind of place, then I would definitely prompt you to come hang out with us when we're live. We're always looking for more good peeps, man, to be a part of what we do. Other than that, man, stay healthy, stay safe, be kind. I'm going to run us an outro real quick to kind of sum up this news segment. And as soon as it's over, we're going to start playing games. You guys rock. Thank you for the amazing news segment. I'll be right back. <laughs> 